Hey, my name is Dan Grissom. Thanks for checking out the UCR Digital Microfluidic Biochip Static Synthesis Simulator. Uh, in this video, basically, I'm going to walk you through the process of setting up the development environment so you can actually uh, modify the code, compile the code, uh, and get the project kind of up and running so you can actually make changes if you'd like. Uh, if you're looking to basically kind of get an overview of uh, the framework and the tools and how to use them, that's going to be in another video. Uh, so again, this video we're going to focus on uh, Windows installation. Uh, the, the tools are written in C++ and uh, have been compiled using the GCC compiler. So um, the, the C++ portions have been compiled in Linux before um, and work just fine. Uh, I've never done it in Mac, but it uh, should be pretty straightforward as well. Uh, the Java, obviously, the Java tools obviously work in um, all the different operating systems that support Java. Uh, the only issue is that for some of the graphical output tools, uh, they depend on Windows binaries. And I'll make sure to point those out later, um, but most of it will work should work just fine. Um, so again, we're going to basically walk you through the setup of Eclipse on Windows and kind of get you started with how to um, get the projects all situated. So uh, the first thing I should say that is that uh, this video assumes that you have two things already installed in your machine. One is the JRE, the Java Runtime Environment, and the other is uh, MinGW. Uh, so MinGW is basically um, the GCC uh, packaged up for Windows. So uh, you'll need to have both of those things installed. And uh, one thing to make sure is when you install MinGW, make sure that you add uh, the bin folder. It's usually C slash MinGW slash bin. Make sure you add that to your path environment. Um, or else uh, the clips won't really know what to do there. So uh, again, let's start by just go ahead and grabbing a fresh copy of Eclipse. Um, <coughs> go ahead and just Google Eclipse, spelled it wrong. But um, come to the downloads, and uh, I would download the Eclipse Classic. Uh, right now the latest version is 4.2, I believe it's called Juno. So, and I would highly recommend downloading the 32-bit version. I've seen a lot of problems with the 64-bit version and some of the other um, plugins that we're adding. So go ahead and download the 32-bit version. Um, I've already downloaded it, so we don't have to sit here and wait. Uh, so I'll cancel this for now. So here's a, a fresh copy. We'll go ahead and extract it. Say extract here. Okay, so now now that's good. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the, the project. Now this is a, a fresh zip file of uh, the project as you would download it. So let's go ahead and extract that as well into a folder. Okay. So now we have our Eclipse and we have our Microfluidic Simulator. And let's take a look inside here real quick. Um, you'll see that it basically has four different folders. Uh, this first one, DMFB Sim Visualizer, that is the Java project which uh, contains the code that will essentially create all the different graphical outputs. MF Sim Static is a C++ project, so at least a source code for a C++ project that actually contains the simulation files. And then MF Static GUI is essentially a Java um, program that will, just it just wraps around the MF Static simulator. Uh, the MF Sim Static, which we see right here, is a it ends up being compiled to a command prompt program, and so the GUI basically knows how to call that, and it just gives you a nice graphical user interface um, for those of you who prefer not to use the command line. Uh, the shared directory is is uh, it contains some Windows binaries for a program called GraphVs, and uh, these binaries are basically used to produce the the graph outputs for the DAGs. Um, and then it contains some Java 3D files and then a program called MinCoder, which is what uh, creates the movies if you're using Windows. Uh, so the first thing we actually want to do is get Java 3D installed. So if you open up the Java 3D, you'll see that we have um, files for 32-bit Java and files for 64-bit Java. So uh, basically what you need to do is put these files in the appropriate directories on your computer. And again, you'll need to make sure that the JRE is installed. So uh, in my case, it already is. So let's go ahead to my computer, and I'll show you where to put these. Go into the C drive. And then you'll see that you have uh, program files, 
and then a x86. If this is if you're using a 64-bit version of Windows. So in the 64-bit version of Windows, the the normal program files is the 64-bit stuff, and then the x86 is the 32-bit. So let's go into the program files and look for Java. You'll see it there, or wherever you happen to install it. Usually it's just program files slash Java, and you'll find the JRE. It's seven is the latest that I have right now. So if we go into, we're in the 64-bit version right now, so if I go into the 64-bit version of Java 3D, you'll see that I have a bin and lib just the same. So basically we want to take all the files, uh, the 3D files, and put them into the JRE. So now we see over here I just have one file, so I'll copy that, and I'll just paste it into the bin. Go ahead. And then I will come back here to the lib and then the ext folder, so lib ext and then I'll copy these three files in here as well. Now whether you think you have the 64-bit version or the 32-bit version, I found that usually both are installed on your machine if you have a 64-bit version. And just to be safe, uh, it's, it's, it's a really good idea to basically add the files for both versions. Um, as well as if you had, um, maybe you have JRE7, JRE6, JRE8, who knows. Uh, I would just go ahead and install the files, put the files in every one. Uh, so let's go back to the x86 version, which is the 32-bit version. So we'll go and you see I have a Java here, Jerry 7 So I'll go ahead and do the same. I'll go into the 32-bit version, into bin, bin, copy these files, paste, and then back into lib and ext, lib, ext, I'll copy these files. So now uh, Java 3D is now installed on this machine. Now if you're using a 32-bit version of Windows uh, on the C drive, you'll probably just have program files. And on the 32-bit version, the program files without the x86 should actually represent uh, most likely the 32-bit uh, 32 version. So you'll need to copy the 32-bit version of the Java 3D files into your program files Java directory. Okay, so Java 3D is now installed. Um, so let's go ahead and try to uh, create the projects and open up the actual source code. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up my Eclipse and um, go ahead and open up Eclipse. So you see Eclipse Juno is loading. And I'm gonna first just browse to the workspace and the workspace is going to be uh, in my case, I put it on the desktop in MFSim static. And the workspace is going to be this MFSim static folder that contains the four other projects. So go ahead and hit OK. And then OK again to load that up. OK. So right now, I just have an empty workspace. And we need to add the projects for one, but we also need to install some plugins first. So uh, let me go ahead and first add the projects. So if we look here, if we look on the right side, we can see, again, we have these three different project folders, and then we have just a shared directory that holds files. So let's go ahead and make projects for each of these. So that, remember, the first one, DMFB Sim Visualizer, is a Java project. So let's go ahead and just create a file new project. Okay, so we'll just do a Java project. We'll say next. And then you want to be careful to name it the exact same thing. So make sure you get the so DMFB Sim Visualizer. Okay, so then uh, it'll, it'll pop up down here that it has an existing source, which is good because we're basically creating a project and it'll automatically import all the old source files. So I'll go ahead and just hit finish. And then when you click in here, we'll see now in source, you have all these different packages with source code um, already taken care of. Okay, so that's that project's taken care of. Let's go ahead and now make a project for the other Java project. So again, let's say file, new Java project. And again, like rename it as the same folder name. So MF sim static GUI. So again, based on the existing source, go ahead, click finish. Again, just to make sure it worked, we can go and look at the source, see the different packages that are there, um, see the different source files that are there. Okay, now, 
This project, this last one, MF Sim Static, remember, is actually a C++. We have um, C files, and then we have, I'm sorry, C++ files, and then uh, headers as well. And so uh, to do this, we're actually going to have to uh, install an add-on to Eclipse. Eclipse is natively for Java, but we can install a plugin to make it also be able to compile C++. So to do that, we need to download what's called the Eclipse CDT. So let's go ahead and go back to Google, and we'll just type in Eclipse CDT. So again, click here. Let's go ahead and go to the downloads page. And we want to basically find the P2 software repository for our version of Eclipse. Again, I'm using Juno, so I'm just going to copy this address. And obviously, if, if you were using a different version of Eclipse, you'd use that one. So let's go back into Eclipse, and let's go to Help install new software and we're gonna say add and we'll just give it a name here CDT and then go ahead and paste that address hit OK and it's gonna find some options now we wanna just do the the main options uh, now before I do this I wanna warn you that uh, if you have a firewall up you might wanna disable it because uh, I've seen that updating through Eclipse will pause because the firewall might be up so I, ha I happen to have AVG so I'll go ahead and see if I can disable it for a few minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Okay, firewall is down, so uh, I just want to install the main features, the optional features aren't important. So I'll go ahead and click next, and then next again, accept, finish, and then you're going to see it's going to start installing and this may take a few minutes so I'm gonna I'm just gonna pause while it's doing it okay the CDT installer just finished and it asks you to restart Eclipse so we'll go ahead and click yes and again so let's select our workspace okay now again we see we're at the same place um, now we want to create one more project and we can go in now and say new project and now we'll have a C++ option so we come in and we say C++ project go ahead and click next and again you want to give it the same name so MF sim static and you see it kind of gives you a warning directory with specified name already exists that's how you know you typed in the right thing uh, make sure that you have the min GW GCC uh, toolchain selected um, you might have something else if you have um, uh, if you, you it's possible to have another option so make sure that the min GW is selected in the empty project and then go ahead just click next finish uh, it's gonna just ask you to associate it you can say yes okay so now you see that you have a C++ option up here alright so now let's go ahead and we can look we see all of our source code in here we see all of our headers in here and some other random folders that you can remove from this view if you'd like okay um, so now we have the the three projects kind of up and running um, let's go ahead and try to there's one more add-on we need to make um, and uh, it, it comes with the it's a window builder which is basically how I've uh, design the GUIs. Uh, so if you come in here to one of these projects, DMFB Sim Visualizer, under the views, you'll see, let's just open up main. Um, you'll notice if we look at the code that there's some big ugly sections with all kinds of just junk groupings, preferred gaps, and all this stuff. So this this was not written by hand, this was created using a GUI. Um, so just to show you how to get these tools set up so you can move things around and, and add new buttons and, and fields and things if you'd like. Uh, basically what we need to do is add another one more plugin. So let's go back to Google and this time just Google for Eclipse Window Builder. Okay, so click on the link there, click on download and then for your version of Eclipse, for us it's 4.2 Juno. For the update site, go ahead, right click copy the link address. Okay, let's go back to Eclipse and uh, we'll see right now we just have this one little box with a, a plus so that's key um, in a second to, to know how we know when it's installed. 
So let's go ahead and say install new software. Go ahead and add, we'll say window builder. Copy the address, click OK. Pending, okay, so now go ahead and just grab everything. Go ahead and click next, next, finish. Okay, and we'll go ahead and pause for a second. Okay, the window builder is installed, and again, we just need to restart Eclipse to get those changes in there. Let's open up the workspace again. Okay, and now you'll see that we have a new uh, window over here. And uh, this allows us to basically create new um, uh, dialogues that we can edit using uh, kind of a WYSI, or not a WYSIWYG, but uh, just a, a, a nice editor, window building editor. Um, so to get these files working, um, when you create a new project, it looks like you may have to create a new file. I'm not exactly sure how the window builder uh, works in terms of associating files with itself but let's go back into the DMFB sim and um, let's go to the views and so the all of these except for the 3d placer um, were created using window builder so let's just start with this first one about us um, and you see normally there should be a tab right here which lets you choose between uh, design or source view so now it's not there so basically I'm just gonna recreate this file I'm gonna basically copy this code make sure you copy it and then I'm going to basically just create a new file so or I'm gonna actually delete this it's about us.java gonna add a new file in there again new class about us create it I'm sorry uh, I'm sorry what you want to do is you got to create it through the new interface that we have so we go up here and say swing and just you can pick any one of these it doesn't matter just do JFrame and then do about us and make sure it's going into the views package hit finish now delete all this and just paste in your old code and now you see there's a source and a design so for the source you can see the code and then for the design it'll uh, parse through it and show you a nice design so there's what it looks like so let's go ahead and do that for these others too while we're waiting so let's open up controls 3d copy it let's close delete click on it and then let's add a swing and it was called controls 3d click finish delete all that paste it and save it okay so now you can see the design of this close that okay now for the image panel um, let's go ahead and open it up copy close delete let's go ahead and add a new swing class image panel finish delete all that and then copy the code in there and then lastly we'll do that for main as well so let's open up main copy delete and then a new I'm sorry new swing let's call it main hit finish okay and then once in a one last time we'll paste that in there and then let's go ahead and look at the design and you'll see if we double click here you'll see kind of what it looks like All right and let's see let's do that also for the MF sim static GUI so go into source and go down to the views and you'll see let's just do this real quickly it's open up about us and this is a slightly different about us so we'll delete We'll add a new swing class, call it about us, delete, and then paste the code in there. Okay, let's close that. Let's do the same for image panel. Delete. Almost done here. And this is the most tedious part. 
Okay, and lastly, let's do this main. Copy, close, delete. And then let's go ahead and come back, swing, add a new class, call it main, delete everything, and paste. And so then you'll be able to see the design for this guy right here. Okay, so now Window Builder is all properly working with our, our source files. Um, so let's go ahead and try to actually get some of these programs up and running. Let's try to get all of them up and running. Uh, first one we'll do is we'll take care of the C++ project. So go ahead and open up, go ahead and open up main. It's in source main. And uh, before you do anything, we need to make one library addition. So let's go ahead and right click on MFSim static and then go down to properties. And then we can go ahead into the C++ build. Let's go ahead and make sure that our toolchain editor is MinGW GCC. And then for the current builder, CDT internal builder. Uh, and then under, let's see, settings, we want to come down to the MinGW C++ linker and then down to libraries. And uh, for this is where for Windows, we need to add um, a library for the timer. So go ahead and change this to all configurations so it'll be compiled uh, applied to the release and debug versions. Go ahead and add, and then what, we're, what we want to add is WinMM. So we click OK and apply. And for Linux, it's going to be a different command. I think it's RT. That should be in a help file somewhere if you're uh, installing this on Linux. Okay, so hit OK. And now we need to go ahead, come over here, and we'll say build debug. Um, so this is going to compile. If we look at our console, you'll see it'll it'll uh, be compiling and give you all kinds of warnings. Um, you can ignore those. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is uh, as MinGW, if you get a newer version of MinGW than I happen to have here, you might get a few errors. I've noticed in the past that as I've upgraded MinGW, it, it gives you a new version of GCC. And there may, may be one or two small things that were acceptable in a previous version. Uh, that are no longer acceptable um, in the newest version. Okay, so you see we have uh, the build finished and you have no problems. So if we look at the main, um, it's basically gonna cause the, the usage string to be called. Uh, so let's go ahead and the last thing we need to do to run this program is to create a run configuration. So under the, the run button right here, we'll just click the little black arrow and we'll click on run configurations. And we'll click on the C++, actually double click it and we'll create a new one. So it's msim static debug. And uh, just for clarity, we can add a you know C++ in there. So that's the C++ program. Apply and then if we want, we can create one more. And uh, for this one, C++. We'll change it from debug to release. And then again, just change this debug to release. So that will uh, play the release version of our binary instead. Let's go ahead and close. Okay, now to run this, we'll go ahead and click on run as. Actually, let's go back to our configurations and uh, go ahead and just hit run. So now you see that the console output, it gave us simply the usage for the entire flow. Um, and th this is the command line arguments. Um, so if you want, you can go and call the program on the command line. Uh, another thing you can do real quick if you want to just kind of get into the code is you can come in and just comment out this forced usage. And then it will actually pass up this line if you didn't give it any arguments. And it will call your hard code down here. So you see I'm scheduling an assay, I'm placing, and I'm routing. So again, if I compile that, and then I hit... Uh, let me make sure I save it first and then I compile it. And then I hit play again on the debug. You'll see that now it gives me a different output. It actually tells me um, I, this is a schedule I generated. I have this schedule time took zero milliseconds, zero milliseconds for placement, one millisecond for routing. Okay, so that's now we have the C++ uh, simulator up and running. Let's go ahead and get the um, Java projects up and running just to show you uh, the last steps, if any, that need to be taken.
So let's go ahead and look at the MSM static GUI first. So um, basically, if we come over here, let's just open up a source file. Main's always a good one. Let's close the C++. And again, let's look at the design. You can kind of see what it's going to look like. So here's uh, kind of the general feel of it. Um, and basically, we want to come up and create a new run configuration. And we'll call this, uh, make sure you click on the Java application, double click that, and you see it already has MFSIM static GUI. So we'll just say, we'll just copy that again, and hit apply, and then we hit run, and you'll see that this will actually come up. Okay, see so it says no binaries found. We need to have binaries in that directory. So we can basically take one of the binaries that we just compiled. That's the C++ binary. I'll, I'll show you this in a second. Um, so let me go into our folder here. Again, we have these four guys. Now if I go into the MF sim static, you can see in the debug folder, I now have a binary, a MF sim static.exe. So I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll just make a copy of this. And I'll go back to my uh, MF sim static GUI folder. And this is just for the purposes of debugging the Java. You won't need to do this if you're just working with the final binaries. But if you're testing this GUI, then you'll, you'll have to go ahead and make the copies of this folder at least once. So I'll just paste this into the debug folder here. Um, and you can even paste one here. If you have a release version to test it, you can paste it here. Um, but now let's go ahead and I'll close this. And I will run this again, and you'll see now it gives me some different options to choose from. And if I choose one of these and I select binary, you'll see that it now fills it with all kinds of different options. Okay, so let's go ahead and close that. And then last but not least, let's look at the visualizer. So uh, come into the visualizer, the DMFV Sim visualizer, and Let's go ahead and open up the views and we'll open up the main here. So if we, again, if we click on the design, you'll see kind of what we're, we're working with the right project here. And again, let's go to run configurations and we'll create one more, um, double click. And it, again, since I'm on this project, it creates the DMFV Sim Visualizer project. And let's just rename it so it's easier. We'll apply it and we'll run it. And now you see that we actually have uh, this program is open um, and again to to run this program let's go back to the folders here um, we'll actually need it depends on output being in here so typically this output is generated by the C++ executable so to test it you would have to put some of those files in here and you'll see those files in another video that we actually talk about uh, using the framework and using the tools in particular. All right, and uh, with that, thanks again for checking out the UCR Digital Microfluidic Biochip Static Synthesis Simulator. Um, if you need any more uh, details on the setup, there should be a, a, a pretty detailed help file. Um, let me kind of show you where that will be. If you go into the MFSIM static, and there should be a help folder, and in there you should find some help files that kind of give a written description of a lot of the things I just uh, walked through in this video. Thanks.